if you're building or you've already built an app that uses multiple APIs like OpenAI and Anthropic and Google or some combination of those or basically any API, this video is going to be interesting because it gives you a way to use a single OpenAI style endpoint to hit any model. And this is useful because different models, different model providers have different APIs. So OpenAI will use this style, Anthropic will use a different style again, and then Gemini, although Gemini I think is starting to offer an OpenAI style endpoint, its primary endpoint is of a completely different format in terms of system messages and what arguments you need to pass in. So by moving to a unified API, which is provided by LLM, this is an open source project. It's a library you can just import. You can call every model using the same OpenAI style format. So this allows you to write an app more quickly, or if you need to change to a model provider because they've released a better model, you can more easily swap because you just have one style. I've actually changed over my API calls now in advanced evals, one of the projects I'm working on there, and it's cut my code in a number of different parts by a factor of about three, because I've reduced from using three different, managing three API styles to just one. So I'm gonna go through Light LLM, and I'll show you, I'll test out different uh, use cases, including long context, tool calling, and then using a custom API I set up on RunPod, and even a custom API I set up uh, running locally on my laptop using LM Studio. So at a very high level to get started with Light LLM, you just pip install Light LLM, and then for every API you're using, you need to import the, uh, the API key. So that's OpenAI API key, Anthropic, Gemini, and it pretty much supports any of the major LLMs or any LLM you can deploy to an OpenAI style endpoint, which I'll show you later. And then you pass into this completion object here, the usual parameters you would pass into an OpenAI style endpoint. So the model, uh, the messages, the temperature, top K, top P, tools, uh, everything you do, you, you do with OpenAI, you can do it by passing it into completion, which is basically like chat completions. Now, just one small point in the model name, you need to pass in not just the model name, but the API provider. So that's the little tweak that you need to make. All right, so let me go through a few different examples. I've got these included for those who are members of the Advanced Inference uh, repo. And um, otherwise, you'll be able to follow along and you can just replicate this by yourself using cursor or something like that. So I've cloned um, Advanced Inference and I'm going to the Unified API Endpoint folder. And within this, there's a readme. You can start off with a pip install requirement, which basically just installs Light LLM. And now we'll walk through a few of the different scripts so we can see examples of this working in action. And what I want to make sure is that it works for a few edge cases that I know of using these different API endpoints. So the first script is the most basic one. It's going to just make a call to the API endpoint here. All of this should look very familiar. I pass in the model and I pass in a simple user message asking what the capital of France is. And note that if I run this script, it's just going to run for each of the default models I've set, which are GPT-4.0 Mini, Gemini Flash, and Claude Sonnet 3.5. So let's run that script. And you can see here, it um, is running and responding Paris for OpenAI, Paris for Gemini, and Paris for Anthropic. So there's the simple test. The next test I want to do is for long context, uh, sorry, for a system message. Uh, this is uh, this is interesting for me to do because the system message is managed differently by the different APIs. And here, Light LLM is just giving me a nice, simple wrapper. So let's take a look at that script for testing the system message. And I'm going to do the classic test of asking the language model to respond like a pirate. And I'll ask what the weather is today. So let's run that again on the three models. And you can see here, OpenAI is responding like a pirate. Uh, Aramati, Gemini, same, and Claude, uh, same. So this looks like it's working well as well. We can confirm that the system messages are being wrapped nicely by Light LLM. Something to add on Light LLM is that it's developed by a company that offers a, an enterprise offering. Um, and I think that's great because many open source projects, there isn't really a business a uh, sustainable business plan behind it. So this gives me more confidence that I could use this library and probably it'll still be around and supported well in a few years. The next text I want to do is on long context. Here I'm feeding in, let's take a look. I'm feeding in the 
transcript from a Berkshire Hathaway meeting. I've put that in this docs folder here. It's the 23 uh, meeting transcript. And I'm actually duplicating it. So I'm just duplicating the string here to make it a bit longer. And then I pass it in. I pass it in just as part of this string, asking for a three bullet summary. So let's send that into the APIs and see what happens. And what I'm interested in is seeing if it is able to detect uh, the context length limits, or at least send back a reasonable error. So here, when I call OpenAI with these 700,000 characters, which is about a bit under 200,000 tokens, I'm getting an error saying that I need to reduce the max context length, which makes perfect sense. Now, um, Gemini supports over a million tokens, so it should give me a response, which it does, and Claude, um, it supports up to 200,000, so it also should give me a response, which it does. So that looks good. Now, the next text I want to test I want to do is, let's see, I don't remember. It's on streaming. Yeah, so quite simply to run streaming, you just pass in stream equals true. Again, it matches the OpenAI syntax. And here for my scripts, if I run in without passing a model, it will just run my three default models. So let's see the streaming here. So yeah. You can see the streaming, the streaming, the streaming. For 50 tokens, that's what I've set it to. Again, setting a typical uh, parameter you would for chat completions. And indeed, the next one I want to run is tool calling. This is, again, a very useful wrapper because you don't have to worry about how the format is different for different APIs. Let's take a quick look at how this works. As you might expect, you pass in uh, tools and you pass in your tool choice. I think if you don't pass this in, it defaults to auto anyway. And then if you look at the tools, you can see that I've defined the classic get weather function and all the syntax you'd expect. So if I run that tool call now, here we go, test tool calling, and we'll see how each of the model resp models respond. So yeah, uh, get, get weather, get weather, and from Anthropic, get weather. So they're all responding well. Interestingly, the Anthropic model is maybe a bit slower than I would have expected. You can run it again just to see if that changes. Yeah, for some reason, Claude is a tiny bit slower on tool calling. Maybe there's a longer system prompt or something there compared to the other models, but I'm not entirely sure. But that just shows you that tool calling works robustly with Light LLM, uh, which is again, a nice wrapping feature. Now, there are two more tests I want to do at least. One is on, well, three more. I want to test first the O1 series of models, then the image inputs, and then I'll move to custom endpoints. Um, just to note that O1 requires a different uh, calling syntax. You're not able to specify a temperature rather than one. You're also not able to pass a system message. So let's take a look at whether Light LLM is properly handling the different syntax for O1. And you can see when I call it, indeed, I don't pass a temperature. You can pass t equals one if you want, um, and I don't pass a system message. So here I just ask this kind of reasoning question around train travel, and it's going to be run on O1 Mini and O1 Preview. You need to be tier five to get access to O1. It should run on that. I'm tier four, I think, so I'm not going to run O1. And O3, I don't think is available in the API yet, and probably would require tier five access. But you can see the responses. Uh, they look good. We have. Um, GPT-4.0 responds in three seconds, GPT, uh, sorry, I mean, O1 responds in four seconds and O1 preview responds in eight seconds. And they both respond with the same answer of 25 kilometers per hour, which actually is the correct answer in the diagonal direction. It's not a particularly difficult test, but this shows you that light LM is handling O1 correctly. Now we'll move to testing on an image. Here, I'm going to pass in an image of a panda. Uh, I've got it in my docs. Let's just copy this here. If I go to the image input file, you can see that in the messages, I have to delineate what's text and what's an image. There are two ways to pass in the image. One is you could actually pass in a URL if it's online, but my image is in my docs folder. It's here. And so the approach to take is to encode that image and to encode it um, in base 64. So actually let's look at that script, the image input. And let's look at how base64 image is created. It's created using the encode, Im encode image on the image path. And if I search for encode image, you can see that I'm using the base64 library to do base64 encoding on the image. So that's it right here. 
all right, so I'll run that script and it should, each of the three models should tell me it sees a panda. Let's see how fast they each are. So GPT, or, oh yeah, GPT 4.0 responds in roughly nine seconds. Gemini responds in roughly six and Anthropic response in six. Now the responses are not the same length, so it's not apples to apple saying the response time is X because I haven't limited the tokens to a small amount. But this all works well and again proves that it's a nice wrapper for passing in image requests. And the last test I want to do is around using a custom endpoint. So I've used these three uh, private model providers, but you can also provide any model that follows OpenAI uh, syntax for its API endpoint. I'll show you two ways to do this. The first is using a one-click template uh, for RunPod. This is an affiliate link, so it supports uh, the Trellis channel. But if you if you click on this, and yeah, if you click on this, it will bring you into RunPod and allow you to pick a GPU. I'll just pick the cheapest one here, and then you will automatically have selected uh, this template, which is for Llama 3.18b, and it's running sglang, which I recommend. It's the fastest inference if you're doing high batch sizes. VLLM is similar speed if it's batch size of one. Um, so I'd recommend one of those two if you want to set up an OpenAI style endpoint. And then if you click on deploy, you'll have an endpoint set up. Now I've actually deployed this in advance. It only takes about a minute start up because it's not that big a model. If you go to logs, you should see that it says the server is fired up and ready to roll. And now you'll need to grab this uh, ID of the pod. And with this ID, you'll go uh, to your .env file. I'll show you my sample .env file and you need to set the custom endpoint. And the custom endpoint for RunPod takes this form here. It's port 8000, because I actually set that in the template configuration. And then you'll need to paste in your pod ID right here. Um, and this is going to tell Light LLM what the base URL is for that OpenAI endpoint. So let me just quickly uh, add that to my .env file. OK, I've added that to my .env file. And so now I can run my custom endpoint with this command here. So it's running this script. And let's actually take a quick look at the script. All it does is it calls in standard OpenAI format, the chat completion, or just completion as it's called for Light LLM, with the model, the messages, the temperature max tokens, and then this extra um, argument, which actually is not standard for OpenAI endpoints, but it does allow you for Light LLM to set a custom endpoint URL and that's being grabbed from my environment variables. And that's why I had to set it in my .env file. So when I run this now, it should work. Notice that you do need to prefix your model name with OpenAI. So it kind of looks a bit weird because I've got the, I've got the organization name on Hugging Face that I'm pulling this model from, Neural Magic. I'm pulling the 8-bit model, which is high quality, but higher speed than 16-bit. Uh, but I additionally have to prefix the OpenAI before it. So let's just run that there. And by the way, there are two questions I'm running. I'm asking the capital of France and I'm asking uh, for some reasoning. And this looks great. Um, yeah, you can see here the two questions that I've passed in. What's the capital of France? One word answer. And then this question on the trains. So this is how you can call a custom endpoint. You can also call, uh, for example, an endpoint you run on your, on your laptop. I'm going to show you this um, now in a second. I'll show you for LM Studio, which um, is a pretty easy way to run a model locally. It actually uses Llama CPP in the back end, I believe. It, it, I'm pretty sure of that. Let me know if I'm wrong. It could be MLX, but I think it's Llama CPP. And once you install it, just search for LM Studio on your browser. Install it either for Mac or for Windows. If you're using Windows, you want to use a small model. The way to pick a model is just to go to discover, search for a model. If you want a small model, I'd recommend you could use Gemma, you could use Llama, um, say Llama 3.2 1B is a good, very small model. I have, um, I have Gemma downloaded, which is a 2B model, also a good model that's relatively small. So what you would do is you would click on load here. And once that's loaded, you can head to the developer view and you can start up the server. And the server is going to run on port 1234. Uh, let me see where that's written. Um, yeah, right here. 
So you can see the server is going to be run on port 1234. And for that reason, in uh, VS Code, when I want to set my endpoint, um, I'm going to do it in .env. I'll comment out my run pod endpoint and set localhost 1234 with this uh, suffix v1 at the end to indicate it's an OpenAI style endpoint. So let me just uh, save my recording in case it causes my computer to crash. And then I'll see if I can show you live how this looks. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to run the server. And to do that, I need to first load the model. So I'm loading uh, Gemma too, and you can see it's 2.59 gigabytes. I think it's an 8-bit. Yeah, it's 8-bit. So in, in 16 bits, that would be uh, about 5 gigabytes. So let's load. And now let's start the server and head over to Cursor, where I'm going to set now. I'm going to comment out the run pod endpoint and set a custom endpoint for LM Studio. Okay, I've done that. So now I'm at a point where I should be able to just make this call with the OpenAI prefix, then the model slug, which is LM Studio Community, Gemma 22 bitggf And I can see that um, just here. Yeah, I can see it here, for example. So let's copy this command and paste and see what we get. So yeah, Paris looks good. And then the complex reasoning. It actually gets that one right too. I mean, it's not that hard a problem, but this all looks good. And you can see I've just called my custom API endpoint running using LM Studio. And that wraps up this overview on uh, Light LLM. I highly recommend it. If you're going to be running with multiple models, it's far easier than setting up API endpoints, API endpoints for each one of them. There are a few other options as well, but I don't think there are any that are quite as uh, comprehensive as Light LLM. Of course, if you're using something like Lang Langchain or even DSPY, they will provide for support for using different models via a single unified wrapper. But if you're trying to build custom uh, on the level of your API calls or function calls, but you just want the API to be wrapped, I think LL Light LLM is probably your best bet. You can find all the scripts I showed you in the advanced inference repo if you'd like to become a member. And in the meantime, let me know any comments below. Cheers.